get started with this afternoon's talks. Uh, Francois Lerzer will continue his talks uh, this afternoon. And um, so. You want me? I do. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, last time I uh, explained some ideas around the motivic integration and also uh, I stated a form of uh, change of variable formula. Uh, today I will begin by uh, explaining some uh, consequences of the change of variable formula. Uh, in particular, I will uh, be able to uh, give a motivic integration uh, explanation of this topological zeta function I introduced uh, on the, the, during the first lecture. So uh, we take a care field of, of characteristic zero. <coughs> say x is a smooth variety and consider a, morph a function on x which I view as a morphism for x to the affine line. Then there is a very natural object uh, to consider it's the following. So say of dimension uh, D. And um, so you can uh, you can look uh, to a set of arcs on X. <coughs> Uh, such that the following holds, you can uh, evaluate f on phi. So you get a certain uh, series, and you look to its uh, order. Of course, this depends only on uh, phi modulo t to the power n plus n 1. So it depends only on the image. So call this YN. So does that mean anything? On the image of So uh, the motive, it's a cylinder, so Yn is the pre-image of Xn <coughs> with Xn curly X, the sets of truncated arcs here. So uh, I should recall you, X is smooth here, so there is no problem in uh, lifting arcs So uh, we know uh, that, in fact, the uh, motivic volume of Yn is, by definition, uh, just the class of Xn in the Gothenic ring, uh, up to some factor uh, So we consider the following motivic uh, zeta function. And here there is some power of L which I should uh, so D is the dimension. 
And uh, so this is the motivic analog of the, of the Igusa series. Question? What's the question? Who is F? L of X. L of X is the arc space of X. What, what, uh, question, what, what is it? OK, that, uh, thank you. Uh, so for me, uh, uh, K point of LX is just uh, an arc with coefficient in capital K on X. So it's a K uh, double bracket T rational point of X. Okay? And uh, for, for LN, it's the same, but modulo Tn plus 1. So there is some, uh, now I realize that there is some uh, obvious thing I, I should maybe have mentioned that, of course, L0 of x is x. Uh, I forgot to tell you that. And L1 of x is just the tangent space of x. So, uh, so f of phi is a series, uh, and v is the valuation So now uh, we take uh, uh, an embedded resolution of uh, the divisor f equals 0, as we did in the periodic case. So, as before, so uh, so one of calls that uh, a log resolution of the divisor f equals zero. So log is just, just the name, I mean, and uh, so we had some. Uh, I uh, uh, mind you the notation. We had some, the exceptional locus was a divisor with normal crossing. And the notation was uh, so as reduced. And the EI was smooth. Uh, they intersect uh, transversely. And uh, I introduced the uh, these guys, and uh, I denote by capital N I the, multipli the multiplicity of uh, this divisor along E I. So, uh, so as a divisor, I this. Okay. And uh, also, I define some uh, new eyes. We, we, they were related to uh, the evaluation of the pullback of the differential forms along EI. And uh, it's not hard to, to get to prove the following proposition. that you get a, mo a formula for the motivic data function. Of the type we already seen. So 
so it, it looks very much like formula we already seen. And uh, so the proof follow from change of variable formula. Quite easily. So the reason why the new R is coming out, or uh, the reason why the new R is coming out is that, uh, of course, in the change of variable formula, uh, you get uh, uh, you get uh, the order of the Jacobian uh, coming out, and this is related to the new one. So you may ask, but here I see a series, and uh, the change of variable formula was uh, for integrals. So where are, where are the integrals? So the integrals are quite, uh, I mean, this class, I, I see it as a volume the volume of this set, and I compute the volume of this set uh, on the resolution, and then I sum up and I, I get this formula. Okay. So, Now we can formally replace for S, say, uh, uh, in uh, natural number. So we get a similar expression, uh, but uh, we replace t by this. So we have uh, something like that. So this looks now very much like uh, what we had uh, in the formula for the topological data function last time. If we, t we take formally the uh, Euler number, the Euler characteristic, so the other characteristic of the line is 1, so this is uh, 1. Here we get the other characteristic of, of that, which, is, which was appearing uh, in the formula for the topological zeta function. <coughs> Here uh, we get 0, so, but uh, OK. But uh, here uh, also we have uh, 1 minus L in, uh, as a factor. So a very simple computation. Uh, give you, give you uh, then for these values, uh, it belongs to MK, but maybe you have to invert something because uh, at, the, at the denominator, you, you, you have a, a geometric series into the L, powers of L. This means a class of projective space. So you have to invert classes of projective spaces. So I, I, this is nothing else that OK? Now, uh, you we evaluate, uh, so so call this ring Uh, now the characteristic becomes uh, Q-valued, and uh, I get that I 
I just uh, get the topological uh, zeta function from the motivic one by taking a learn characteristics. Okay. So it gives it gives another proof of the invariance of the right hand side in the formula, but uh, it's much better since uh, you have now a uh, direct definition of the left hand side because that series is completely uh, uh, is uh, of course canonically attached to, to your data you don't have any choice <coughs> so a remark Maybe it's not so much concerned with the topic of the school, but but that uh, these uh, spaces extend, they contain uh, interesting information by themselves. So if I t take the other uh, number of extend, it is uh, equal to uh, the Lefschetz number so I should explain the meaning of these symbols so assume K is C so F is a Milner fiber at zero, M is a more drummy operator. So I iterate n times, so that's for n at least one. And this is the left chest number, so the left chest number of something. By definition, it's the alternating sum of the trace of the operator on the Kawaji group. So uh, I don't want to comment more on that. This is just to say that the extends by themselves contain uh, interesting uh, information. Because it is known that it's easy to, to prove that if you know all the leftmost number of all iterates, you know the uh, virtual characteristic polynomial of the modromy operator. So uh, you get a, a lot of information of the modromy just from this extent. So superficially, we, we, one could be very happy because we, uh, I told you that uh, we were dreaming of relating periodic integrals to Mondromi. Then we pass to the limit. You have this motivic, uh, this topological zeta function, which is that is related to this motivic one. And uh, when you uh, you have this coefficient, I mean, uh, you get something related to the Mondromi. So you could say, okay, I'm close to understand the Mondromi conjecture. This, there, there is a relation, but it does not tell you anything about uh, the poles of uh, this data function. So it shows the connection, but nothing more. Uh, this thing here is the usual number? Yes. It depends on what is the usual for you. I mean, mm -hmm. it's either characteristic? Yeah, it's support, yes, yes. With compact support, the one which yeah, is. So is this hard to prove? What? Is this formula hard to prove? Uh, it's not, I mean, the proof is, is ugly because it's just because you can compute both sides on the resolution and you just see with your eyes are the same. I'm just wondering why n power of the monogamy operator appears somehow naturally in excess. But uh, I don't know no direct proof of this. I mean, okay. I, uh, I know no proof. Uh, being just staying on the space X and not going to a resolution. So maybe this, uh, this result shows that more is to understand. The second uh, fact is that, in fact, it is the same uh, in the same. Uh, you, so this is just another name for the affine line minus zero. And you have a natural morphism. Just to uh, fire 
Uh, so let's use this. We can use this notation now. Uh, uh, so that's the coefficient of Tn. So f of phi, f of phi is just of order n. So, so you get a nice morphism, and it's a. Uh, uh, or C, it's a vibration, not a Zariski vibration, but a vibration by homogeneity. And so this vibration contains a lot of information. So I don't want to tell more about that. But from a computational point of view, uh, these extents are not so hard to compute. And uh, for instance, for a plane curve, you can uh, recover uh, a huge amount of, uh, of, of known result, sometimes not completely easy to prove, uh, without using any resolution, just by computing uh, on your initial state space. And one can hope that there are more interesting examples where this can be done. So I, I also explain now uh, Batyrov theorem. So uh, remember, you had x and x prime uh, by rational Calabiao smooth. They were smooth and proper. So I dominate them by a third guy with x double prime smooth and h and h prime uh, by rational. And uh, we uh, compute uh, the volume of LX. It's just uh, on X double prime. So it was the order of Jacobian of H. And the same. With prime. And it's easily seen, I have no time to explain it here, but that the hypothesis implies that you have this equality. It's very much as in Battery of Proof. And so you get that you have equality of these volumes. So this implies that uh, x smooth, so mu of Lx, is just this. Why? Because in this case, Lx is a cylinder of a, L not x, which is x. So strictly speaking, the, so I get but here I shifted a little. I, uh, it's not in M, the equality is in M bar. Remember that M bar was just the image in M hat. Uh, in the previous application, it was not in M bar, it was in M. It depends on, sometimes you can, okay. But it, does, it doesn't matter for as far as the uh, Hodge numbers or on Euler numbers are concerned, so. This is a, there, there is a more general result. 
Uh, oh, yeah, but uh, answering the question, uh, I will I will set a result. I mean, I don't have to to state the question. So more generally, this all uh, if. X, X prime are what is called K equivalent, meaning that you have a diagram like this. <coughs> so that Uh, the pullbacks of the catalytical uh, uh, sheaves, uh, or maybe I, I use another notation. For isomorphic. Uh, this is the same proof get that you have equality. <coughs> so they have same no. Euler and same Euler number. That was the question, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's mm -hmm. what I find slightly mysterious, because for usual integration, it's clear how the, what the role that the canonical pla class, class plays. Yes. Uh, but if for this motivating integration, what does the canonical class have but, to do but with the, the same? The same role. It does, uh, in some sense? Yes. Uh, yeah, because... Uh, mm. Mm. And um, so uh, I, I want to, to so you, you, you may want to compute, uh, so take uh, x smooth and take h, uh, so I don't write uh, um, with a, a, a log resolution, so exceptional locus uh, DCN. Then you get that uh, volume, of, volume of LX, uh, which is just uh, maybe expressed on Y. And it, may, it, it, it is easily expressed as follows. Something like that, okay? So, and this is, uh, in fact, also uh, So you get a formula you get this formula uh, so in the same at the same time where we prove the define and prove the result about the topology data function we proved of, of this formula. So this formula was first proved by periodic integration. Also follows from uh, weak factorization. But I, I find it very frustrating that I know no direct topological proof of this fact. I mean, I tried a lo long time. I mean, this, it looks extremely strange. I mean, I think every person uh, seeing this formula for the first time just uh, say, OK, uh, I will use, uh, I don't know what, obstruction theory, chain classes, uh, Riemann rock. <laughs> OK. But uh, OK, if somebody here can do it, that's fine. But I doubt. I mean, maybe I'm wrong to doubt, but I doubt. OK. So this is very, very strange that y there is no uh, direct proof. Either you use periodic integrals, no motivic integration, which is not hard, 
or weak factorization, which is very hard. But there is no direct uh, proof of such a thing. So now also, uh, what, what happens if x is singular? Then you can take, you can uh, similarly, you get a formula of the type, uh, of the same type, for new LX. And uh, with some new eyes, which are defined some somewhat differently, but I, I, I don't want to, to speak about that. But uh, you get uh, really uh, uh, some other number for, for, for this guy, which now, in general, will belong to Q. So uh, this is the moment for a kind of uh, philosophical remark. So uh, first remark, why is motivic integration powerful uh, uh, when you, want, you consider birational problems? So uh, usually, uh, two birationally equivalent varieties, they differ in co-dimension one. Okay? But uh, when you replace the varieties by the corresponding arc spaces, they will differ in, co in infinite co-dimension. Why? Because uh, when you consider arcs that are completely contained in uh, the exceptional Loki, uh, they are defined by an infinite number of equations, and it's clearly infinite dimensional, uh, of codim infinite codimensional. But if you take, an, of course, you have the arcs with, with a special point on the exceptional locus, and with generic point outside. But uh, these arcs, like these kind of arcs, they correspond to each other on the two biationally equivalent spaces. By, uh, the, because you can uh, lift the generic point, and then by the valuative criteri criteria for uh, properness. So uh, maybe I, I should write it in the following way. So you have. with, uh, say, and uh, these guys are of co-dimension one, say, then uh, you have such an isomorphism. Of, co of course, you have an isomorphism of L of Y minus E uh, with L of X minus F, since they are isomorphic. But you have much better, you have this isomorphism. And these guys are of, uh, of infinite codimension. So this is uh, the explanation why things work. And when you consider uh, singular s spaces, you have similar, uh, uh, you can view things similarly. So in mu of Lx, the singular set x thing counts. Why? Because it's the same. Uh, arcs that are completely contained in the singular set uh, is uh, uh, this is set of which could infinite could dimension. But uh, uh, Arcs with origin on uh, the singular locus and generic point outside, they count for the volume. Okay. So now let's go back uh, to the connections with periodic integration? I'm sorry, just one question about that formula again. 
When you say is this yeah, formula? Yeah. When you say it follows from weak factorization, do you mean it's easy when it's a single it's a succession of blowing up of smooth things? I see yeah. then it's I see what I see what that is. <laughs> But uh, that's the proof that I mean, you, you, to use weak factorization it does not explain anything. <laughs> it does not help you to, to find, if, to imagine that the formula can hold. Okay. So now, uh, 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 the formula that was here uh, uh, for the motivic uh, zeta function is formally uh, very close to the one I, I gave you for the uh, periodic zeta function when you were defined uh, of a, a number field for, for almost all p. So for free, you have the following. So let's say, it, it doesn't matter, but let's say x is the affine space of a number field. You, you have that for almost all p. Uh, remember that np was the operator counting points modulo p. And uh, this is the corresponding completion. And uh, of course, with uh, here it's a function of t, capital T. And the relation is, as usual, t corresponds to q to the power minus s with q, the cardinality of the residue field. So that's for free. Okay. So uh, you get the first illustration of a of a principle that. Uh, I want to uh, dev uh, develop further during the last part of these lectures, is that uh, natural periodic integrals, uh, they, uh, correspond, they, are, they are specialization that can be read for motivic ones. Okay. So uh, you can restate this uh, for the corresponding Poincaré series. Uh, so you, we, you, we denoted the Igusa series by uh, by Q. If I um, so, you have uh, so a rational series. In. I should uh, add some, some, some an important remark. So NP was defined for almost all P. But here you have a series, so it has an infinite number of coefficients. Uh, so you can say, but well, maybe it's, it's not defined for all the coefficients. But one knows already that this series is rational. I gave a formula for it. So you have no problem. So where Q, QP is the corresponding uh, Igusa series uh, on uh, 
Kp. So this you have for free. Now we, we, we would like to consider the similar result for the Ser series. So, question, do we have a similar result? So, there is a naive candidate. Yes. Uh, uh, this, for the moment, uh, this Igusa and Ser series, I define them only for hypostophases. But uh, there is no reason to to stick to hypostophases. They, they have meaning for any affine variety, and in fact, for any variety. Okay. Sorry. Yes. The Igusa series, you just mean the counting point series, right? Yes. What, yes. what is, so what is that, uh, the Q multi mm -hmm. It's just essentially, the, 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 it's essentially this that one, I mean, up to some uh, very minor some, twist. Some twist, I see. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. In fact, the series and the integrals are the same. Uh, right, whatever twist you needed to get on yes, the integral you, you, side. Yes. And, yes. So now uh, maybe it's time to to generalize uh, the two series. Okay. So uh, uh, we take uh, x uh, variety of uh, the p. And then uh, you define uh, the cardinality of the and the cardinality of the image of of rational points in Zp. In this guy. Okay. So when x is an, uh, a, a fine uh, hypersurface, you recover the previous numbers. And you, you, you consider, so q t uh, Now, uh, so uh, these series are interesting only when x is singular, otherwise they are trivial. And uh, so I treated Qt in the hypersurface case. And in fact, uh, we can do the same in the general case. So let's uh, consider the Pt. So uh, there is a natural uh, geometric analog. So 
So here you are considering the and uh, this uh, the analog is just this is replaced by elix and by pi n. So uh, one is tempted to consider This series. Now you, you can ask me, but what is this guy? Who is that guy? Uh, because we know only we we can only associate uh, elements in the Grotendieck ring of uh, varieties or more generally constructible sets. So I have to show you that this guy is constructible. Why is it uh, consecutive? So I, I know uh, three proofs. Uh, the one I will uh, give you, which I think is the better, best one. Two others, one you can use uh, for by, 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 by so three proofs. You can you can use uh, pass the pass uh, quantifier elimination. <coughs> you can use Ionaka, and I think the the most natural proof is to use Greenberg's theorem. So. Uh, there is a general, uh, uh, there is a, a nice paper by Greenberg in a, a publication of the IHS, long time ago, uh, concerning uh, uh, lifting of uh, uh, approxi approximate solutions of equations in uh, 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 Anzalian field. And it's uh, very, quite general, I mean, it, it's uh, the main result uh, also holds in characteristic P, for instance. Okay? So uh, in our setting, uh, Greenberg's theorem says the following. For every n, you have some gamma of n uh, greater than n such that, so I did not uh, give a name to the truncation from pi index gamma n to pi n, so I will. In words, it can be stated uh, uh, in the following way. To know that approximate solutions of a given equation or set of equations lead to actual solution, it's enough to know that they uh, lead uh, to approximate solution to some higher order, uh, uh, which depends only on n on, uh, of the equation. Okay, that's it. 
So now, uh, uh, in fact, uh, the first uh, result we, uh, Jan and me, obtained uh, using motivic integration was the following, and uh, I think I see the result uh, I like uh, very much. Uh, the, it is uh, for, it stays at the series uh, here. So you should be aware that here the, the, co the coefficients, they already make sense in K0 of varieties. But we, the proof uh, only gives uh, rationality in this range. Okay. But uh, with what I explained yesterday, that <laughs> sometimes rationality do, do not hold, does not hold uh, in K0, now we are maybe less surprised. Anyhow, it's the, we have this result. So now, I mean, uh, such a result seems quite natural with all we have seen uh, before, but one should, uh, I mean, a few years ago, uh, people were interested into these spaces uh, that were first considered uh, in the 60s uh, by John Nash. So it was uh, one of the last uh, mathematical works by John Nash uh, before his illness. So it's a paper that was a long time unpublished, and a few years ago it appeared in Duke, <coughs> in a special volume in honor of Nash. And uh, so uh, Nash made uh, very interesting speculations about these spaces. So some s stating some, something called uh, now Nash problem, uh, which unfortunately got a counterexample quite recently, but by uh, Kolar and Ishii. But there is a counterexample, but it, the status of the result is not, of the problem is not, is not yet clear because it's still often uh, true, so. <laughs> okay, and so uh, uh, people in, in singularity theory were really interested in inter understanding these spaces. And so uh, our result gives uh, a strong uh, structure theorem of, on these spaces. Okay. Uh, now uh, you can uh, you can say, okay, I, 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 I see the, the next theorem. The next theorem will be that if x is defined over a number field, this series will. Uh, specialized to the surface. So take x defined of a k number field in general. Uh, if you take this, uh, you don't uh, cover the surfaces. And <laughs> so that's the reason why I need another another hour to. <laughs> And uh, so the reason for that is is, uh, is easy to understand. I will just explain it. But I, I must uh, I must say that in fact uh, for for some time Jan and me were considering as uh, almost self-evident that all motivic integrals should specialize to periodic ones, and it's only I was lucky enough to give uh, a general audience talk. Well, I tried to to present material in a more motivating way than usual to to ask myself this question, 
And fortunately, uh, I realized that it was not true uh, before uh, <laughs> publicly <laughs> stating it as a result. So why, why, why is it uh, general not true? So it's easy to understand. Uh, so, what's, uh, so this is constructible, but more precisely, what, I what, what is it? So, uh, so I take uh, uh, say phi in, in uh, ln of x. So it, this means that phi is in a rational point for some uh, field, uh, say uh, k. Phi will belong to the image of L of it if there exists psi in L of x, such that pi n of psi is phi. So, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to write such thing on the blackboard, but uh, here what's important is it's defined over some field, but it may be a bigger field. I mean, it's a geometric statement. We are not concerned with rationality issues here. Okay? But uh, in the PRD case, uh, I, I really want to lift my approximate solution to PRD solution. So I don't want the residue field to change. Okay? So that's the reason. Uh, another, and so one, no one could be uh, surprised by the fact that the result holds in the previous case. But uh, in fact, there is a big difference that we already observed, is that the Iguza case, there is no quantifier. And uh, in the third case, you have existential quantifiers. And uh, this uh, causes a lot of trouble as far as rationality issues are concerned. OK. So I will explain uh, you how to do in the next talk. Any questions? OK, well, we'll take a five-minute break and start again.